Greetings interwebs, welcome to another episode of Grey Idea Studios. Today we have this, a LEGO 2000s era Toei Aguirre Spider-Man. Now, I really like this figure. The detailing is amazing. Uh, I do have a few problems with it, but we'll get to that later. I want to discuss first the head. I love the head, I love the webbing that comes to a point in the center, and I love the eyes. The eyes are the classic triangles that Spider-Man had for a while. And I've always been a fan of the more triangular eyes than the round eyes. I just always thought that the triangular eyes always added a bit of intensity to Spider-Man. Hopping down to the front of the torso here, we have some blue detailing on the sides here. Give the suit a bit of texture and not just flat blue, which I appreciate. You have the big red parts, you have the webbing on the red, and you have the big spider here. I do think the spider is a little big uh, as compared to the movie version. I don't think the spider came down off of his chest. But you know what? I do kind of like the fact that the spider is a bit big. It kind of adds some more pop, and I think it's kind of cool. Moving down to the front of the legs, you have more blue detailing on here. Gives it a bit more texture, some more webbing. But I do have a problem with the fact that it just ends. That's... That's a bit odd, I think. I mean, I can kind of understand it's difficult to print down there, but still, it's just, I, I thought it would have been cool to have some printing down here and then continue on to the feet. Well, speaking of feet, you do have some printing on the front of the feet here, which are, I think is really cool. You don't get that a lot in many, many figures. And one of the coolest things about this figure is that the webbing is metallic. It's reflective, as you can see a little bit better here. And if you are a fan of the Tommy Maguire era movies, you will know that the webs were a bit more reflective than most versions. So that's the front. We'll go ahead and flip this around and go to the back. So here's the back of the minifigure. We have some more webbing on the back of the head. We have some more red and webbing on the top and bottom of the torso. More blue detailing. And then a big red spider. I really like this spider. Probably my favorite of all the uh, backs of all of my Spider-Man figures, and I do have quite a few. I'll discuss the legs at a later portion. The, the arms of this figure also have printing on them, which I just, I've always loved printing on the arms. You have some silver metallic webbing here, you have a little bit of blue here, uh, just to add a bit more texture, and it's just, I just appreciate the work that was put into the arms. So now we'll come to the the issues of this minifigure, the things I have a little bit of a problem with. There are too many, and I can ignore most of them, but the biggest one here is the fact that you just have printing on the front of the legs, and then just ends and goes into red. I don't like that. It doesn't look good to me. I mean, like, I get, I get that it's cheaper to give, like, a flat red minifigure leg and then print some stuff on it, but at least print some stu blue stuff on the side. It's just a little distracting for me, and I plan to make movies, Lego movies with this guy, and the leg here just is very distracting if you're viewing him from anywhere besides the front. I I don't like the fact that it just ends. That's, that's definitely my biggest problem with the figure. Um, I can get around it, but still, I'll, for movie editing, I'll probably trade out the legs um, for something a bit more bit more blue. Other than that, the other issues with this figure aren't really that big. One uh, one thing is that it comes with one of these little webs here, um, and that's all it comes with. There's no, like, web rope here. But of course, if you have any Spider-Man sets ever made, you will probably have a big web rope. And plus, you can't really find these pieces much else anywhere nowadays. So, I can get around that. Another odd thing about this minifigure that can be avoided, of course, um, is it came with a second head here, which is supposed to resemble a minifigure head with a mask on, which is cool in theory, but this head just is, it looks weird. Um, from this angle, it looks pretty normal. It, from this angle, it looks all right, doesn't, doesn't, uh, I don't have a problem with the front, but when you rotate it like this, it just kind of loses its cool factor for me. You don't, it kind of looks more like a balloon from this angle. The chin, there's a little bit of a chin here, but that's, but it's 
barely exists, and it just it just looks really really thin here. If I hold up the actual head right here, you'll notice that the head will come right about here. It it has a bit more bit more of a front to it, um, and it's kind of hard to see, but. This, this head just looks tall and thin to me from the sides. The head also doesn't have any printing on the back, which is... I, I, don't, I don't understand why. I mean, I think it'd be cool to have some printing on the back, and that would probably really make the minifigure, uh, or this, this head anyway, it would make the, the head. But it's just, it's just red. It, it doesn't have any other printing or anything on it. Of course, you don't have to use this head. Um, you can use the regular minifigure head, but if you're gonna put in a spare head, make it look really good. I just, I just, I just don't, I don't like this head. I don't think it adds anything to the figure. So this has been my review of this minifigure. It's a really strong minifigure, has some really cool details to it, but also has some weaknesses. The legs are my biggest issue. Uh, they just look weird from any angle besides the front. Other than that, any other, uh, difficulties can be worked around. Now I want to end this video on something that I just wanted to do. So this did not come with the minifigure, but I think it's funny all the same. So this is my version of a Tommy Aguirre face of Peter Parker. Um, the hair I got from just about, I think I got it from Maxwell Lord of uh, the Lego Wonder Woman 1984 set, and the face, I got it from, uh, Ian Solo, who is the, uh, young version of Han Solo, but, I mean, I think they, I think this face originally appeared on Ron Weasley, so you can use Ron Weasley's head for it. Um, I, this of course didn't come with the minifigure, I just thought it was cool, and I had to include it in this video. So that's my review of the minifigure. If you liked what you see, please hit like and subscribe. Share with your friends, family, maybe your evil twin if you got one. This is Justin from Grey Studios. Have a great day.